Let's go see this beautiful tower, which is only 50 steps across the street from the Newport Tower Museum. And look at this beautiful thing. Good toggies. So who do you think built the tower? Oh, good question. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a beautiful dog. Well, there's five theories about who built the tower. The Vikings in 1150. The Chinese in 1421. The Templars in 1398. And the first governor of Rhode Island. In 1677. Which one of them do you think is right? In the early 1990s, Professor William Penhallow from the University of Rhode Island found several astronomical alignments in the windows of the tower. Professor Penhallow said that if you come to this park, you'll see the full moon come up above the horizon through two of the windows of the park, the west window and the northeast window. This is an event that takes place uh, every 18.6 years. It's called Lunar Minor. Well, you know, Professor Penhallow said that whoever built that tower out there not only knew astronomy, they really, really knew astronomy. When the Big Dipper comes around and uh, Dubby, which is one of the brightest stars, is visible through these two windows, then the North Star is exactly north. We can through, see through the tower and you see a small patch of sky out the south window. On the winter solstice, December 21st, the sun comes up above the horizon and about half an hour after sunrise, Boom! It shines right through those two windows. An hour and a half later, this patch of light works its way down and it illuminates that egg-shaped rock. It's like a spotlight on it. It's like so dramatic that you can see that it was done intentionally. So what did Professor Penhallow mean that the first floor room of the tower was a camera obscura room? There's one small hole. Uh, that's the window right there, the glass. Now, if you turn off all the lights in the room, the image from what's outside will appear on the inside. And you can see the flag on the flagpole. These are the trees outside. Here's a car in the, uh, parked in front of the Mill Street. Uh, but what's that bright spot right there? Well, that is the image of the sun. In other words, that is the solar disk. There it is. It's a be beautiful round image that, that gets projected onto the interior wall. In the summertime, the image of the sun will move across the floor uh, right here at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, and work its way up. In the winter, when the sun is much lower in the sky, the solar disk works its way across the floor right here. 10 o'clock, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, and in the middle of the year, in the uh, spring, in, uh, in the fall and spring, it goes across the center. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. So in other words, if the camera obscura solar disk was right here, uh, you could say, well, it's about a quarter past 11, a little before the fall equinox. It tells you the time of day and the day of the year. Well, when we understand the camera obscura, it might give us a clue as to uh, who would have built the tower with a camera obscura solar disk calendar room in it. I came across this chapter in Rhode Island history that nobody had written about in the last 75 years. Uh, it was been known since 1934 uh, when uh, uh, when a fellow uh, found uh, in uh, the Elizabethan State Papers this document that said Narragansett Bay was named the John D. Bay and River. And John D. was one of the most famous statesmen and philosophers in Elizabethan England. He was the Queen's philosopher. He had a library of over 4,000 books. He was, spoke fluent Greek and Latin and, uh, and Hebrew. And, and uh, he was the one who in 16, 1577 convinced Queen Elizabeth that she had a legal right to North America in the first place. Anyways, uh, the document said that uh, the, the, the John D. Bay and River uh, is, uh, 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 to find it, you go to a triangular island, which is Block Island, and you go north about 15 leagues, and then you'll see uh, uh, a bay, that, uh, a, a river that opens up to the south. It goes 15 leagues in a, a northeasterly direction and opens up into a large bay in which there's five small islands. And the whole thing is about 42 degrees latitude. Well, it's pretty clear that this is a description of Narragansett Bay. This, in 1583, was the John D. Bay and River, and this was the chosen site for the first Elizabethan colony. Well, the uh, John D. was working in, uh, with a fellow by the name of Sir Humphrey Gilbert, who was a famous explorer, and Sir Humphrey Gilbert uh, uh, led an expedition with five ships, 280 men, and uh, they came to uh, across the Atlantic Ocean, and they made it as far as St. John's in Newfoundland. A giant wave came and swallowed Sir Humphrey Gilbert's boat up, and he drowned. The whole colonization effort came to a grinding halt because the letters patent were in his name. Well, David Beers Quinn, the most noted authority on Elizabethan exploration, found that there was a preliminary expedition in 1582 of two ships 
and, and they came across and stayed here for at least nine months. It's not known exactly where they were, where they, what they did, but they were part of this whole, same whole Sir Humphrey Gilbert expedition. And, and uh, it was a year before Sir Humphrey, but Sir Humphrey sent them. And I claim that they came and built this building to be the first building in the British Empire, the first building, Elizabethan uh, colony in the New World.